Billie Jean King, All In, An Autobiography. Dive into the captivating journey of Billie Jean King and her autobiography, All In. Witness her rise from a young sports fanatic to a tennis legend, all while breaking barriers and championing equal rights both on and off the court. Follow her trailblazing career, her confrontations with discrimination, her fight for equal pay, and her commitment to the LGBTQ community. Accompany Billie Jean on her inspiring journey to conquering the tennis world and paving the way for a more inclusive, equal future in sports. Igniting Billie Jean's Dream On a sunny Southern California day in 1954, 10-year-old Billie Jean Moffat took her first tennis lesson. Captivated by its blend of physical and mental challenges, she made a life-altering decision that day, she aspired to be the world's number one tennis player. With unwavering support from her working-class parents, who sacrificed time and money for the athletic dreams of both Billie Jean and her younger brother Randy, she pursued her passion. Confronting gender barriers, young Billie Jean firmly believed that determination and resilience would fan the flames of her dream. Under the eucalyptus-scented Southern California sky, 10-year-old Billie Jean Moffat discovered her true calling when she picked up a tennis racket. As a multifaceted sport combining variety, constant motion, and mental challenges, tennis captivated the young sports enthusiast in ways that other activities simply couldn't. Taking her father's advice that tennis was a suitable sport for a girl, Billie Jean was convinced she had found her path. Immediately after her first lesson, she told her mother she wanted to be the number one tennis player in the world. Her mother's humble response neither curbed nor underestimated her ambitions. Years later, her younger brother Randy would likewise express his goal to become a professional baseball player. It was a testament to their parents' unwavering support that both siblings would fulfill their childhood dreams, despite their working-class background and the financial strain associated with pursuing athletic aspirations. However, Billie Jean's journey was not without obstacles. Attending her first professional baseball game, she was struck by the lack of female players. The realization that her dreams faced inherent gender barriers sparked a new awareness. Even if she proved herself as skilled as the boys, it wouldn't guarantee her a place alongside them on the playing field. Billie Jean's experience mirrored those of many young girls who encountered skepticism and exclusion when attempting to compete in a predominantly male environment. Yet, even as a child, Billie Jean possessed a steadfast determination. Rather than allowing these challenges to discourage her, they fueled her desire for triumph. Time and time again, she would face seemingly insurmountable barriers, but her unwavering resolve would propel her forward. In the face of adversity, young Billie Jean Moffat's passion for tennis burned brighter than ever, igniting her journey toward becoming the world's number one tennis player. Paving the way to equality Embracing her natural talent, a teenage Billie Jean found her passion for tennis and let hard work and determination define her path. Inspired by her coach and pastor, the young athlete remained committed to her goals, even in the face of defeat. Recognizing the stark lack of diversity in her beloved sport, Billie Jean vowed to use her future success as a vehicle for change, seeking a greater purpose in her calling. It was during her first tennis lesson in September 1954 that Billie Jean felt the spark of what would become her life's work. Her coach, Clyde Walker, provided free lessons through a city-funded program, and he saw the potential in this young talent, refusing to impose limitations on her. Believing in hard work and determination, Walker enrolled Billie Jean and her friend Susan in local junior tournaments. Her commitment was further fueled by the wisdom of her family's pastor, Reverend Bob Richards. Known as the Vaulting Vicar, this Olympic gold medalist in pole vaulting and pastor instilled in his congregation the importance of tolerance and putting in the extra effort to become a champion. His words resonated with the young tennis hopeful. Although Billie Jean faced a crushing defeat in her first juniors match, she used this experience to push herself even harder. She practiced relentlessly, honing her skills both on and off the court, to the point where her wins earned her recognition in local newspapers as a rising star. 
The turning point came as Billie Jean observed a match at the Los Angeles Tennis Club in 1955. The stark whiteness of the sport, from the attire and equipment to the players and spectators, was unmistakable. The same year, the Supreme Court issued a ruling to desegregate all public facilities, but the tennis world seemed untouched. It was there that Billie Jean made a solemn vow, if she succeeded in becoming the number one player in the world, she would devote herself to fighting for equal rights and breaking down barriers. Tennis was not just a sport to her but an opportunity to unite people and champion change. In pursuit of her calling, Billie Jean embarked on a journey to make a difference both on and off the court. Ambition and Inequality in Tennis In 1957, young Billie Jean's encounter with the world-class tennis player Althea Gibson inspired her to pursue greatness. As she began her own journey, she discovered the discrepancies and unfairness embedded in the world of tennis, particularly concerning the division between amateur and professional players. Undeterred, Billie Jean persevered, navigating the financial obstacles caused by this rigid system. Witnessing Althea Gibson's awe-inspiring performance in the Pacific Southwest Championships, 13-year-old Billie Jean was mesmerized by the skill and grace of this prestigious athlete. Althea had broken multiple barriers as the first black player to compete in the U.S. National Championships and win a Grand Slam title. This level of excellence left a profound impact on Billie Jean, showing her that hard work and dedication would be necessary to achieve greatness within the tennis world. However, Billie Jean was no stranger to competition. Shortly after being inspired by Althea's performance, she won a junior singles tournament. This victory afforded her access to the Los Angeles Tennis Club and an opportunity to compete against higher-level players, including seasoned tennis celebrities and Hollywood stars. As Billie Jean navigated the tennis world, she began to notice its peculiarities and contradictions. Among these was the ongoing debate regarding amateur and professional players. Ironically, major tournaments like Wimbledon only allowed amateur players to participate, frowning upon professionals who competed for monetary reasons. Wimbledon champions, for instance, received just a trophy in a measly 45-pound gift voucher. When Althea Gibson turned professional in 1959, she notably stated, you can't eat trophies. This phrase resonated with Billie Jean as she continued to rise within the U.S. Lawn Tennis Association, USLTA. Facing her first appearance at the U.S. National Championships in 1959, she experienced firsthand the financial barriers many players faced in the sport. While some could afford to participate in smaller tournaments, Billie Jean and others relied on local fundraising efforts for travel expenses. These financial limitations were further emphasized by the USLTA's per diem payments, which amounted to only $14 a day. Billie Jean's determination to transcend these obstacles exemplified her unwavering ambition to take her rightful place among the greats in tennis. She pursued her dreams, fueled by her encounter with Althea Gibson's extraordinary talent and the desire to dismantle the unfair systems within the world of tennis. Lighting the Feminist Fire in 1961, fresh from her historic Wimbledon win, young and passionate Billie Jean Moffat found herself at Los Angeles State College, uncertain about her future in tennis. While she yearned to go pro, gender discrimination meant that opportunities for women to advance in the sport were few and far between. This all changed when Billie Jean met Larry King, a progressive-minded law student who opened her eyes to the injustice she faced as a female athlete. With renewed determination, she vowed to reach the top and change the game for women in tennis. When Billie Jean Moffat decided to attend Los Angeles State College after graduating high school, she was already a Wimbledon champion. Partnering with Karen Hansa, a talented 18-year-old, she had made history as the youngest women's doubles team to win the prestigious tournament. However, back at home, she still faced the restrictive expectations of a woman's traditional role in society. Eager to go pro, Billie Jean knew she needed a game-changing offer from influential promoters like Jack Kramer. Despite her triumphant Wimbledon performance and expert coaching from former champion Alice Marble, these opportunities rarely came to women. Facing the uncertainty of her path, she was introduced to Larry King, 
a law student who would become a pivotal figure in her life. From the moment they met, Billie Jean and Larry hit it off. His intelligence, charm, and good looks were undeniable, but it was his progressive views that made a profound impact on Billie Jean. Witnessing the blatant inequality between male and female athletes at Los Angeles State College, where men had access to varsity sports programs while women did not, Larry sparked a fire in her. He pointed out how she was treated as a second-class citizen because of her gender, igniting her passion for feminism and the fight for fairness. With Larry's support, Billie Jean became determined to use her success in tennis as leverage to transform the sport for women. Her initial plan was to become the world number one, but she faced challenges along the way. Losses in the semi-finals at Wimbledon and the quarterfinals at the U.S. Nationals in 1964 demonstrated that she needed to make changes in order to achieve her goals. Undeterred, she decided it was time to head down under, setting the stage for the next chapter in her remarkable journey. As Billie Jean Moffat King, she would go on to become a legendary advocate for women's rights both on and off the tennis court, changing the game forever. Turning Point, Billie Jean's Journey Tennis harbors intense rivalries, including the ongoing battle between Billie Jean and Australian player Margaret Court. Though they clashed time and again on the court, a turning point in Billie Jean's career came after she decided to travel to Australia, quit college, and fully devote herself to the sport. With the support of her fiancé Larry and financial assistance from Australian businessman Bob Mitchell, she worked tirelessly with renowned coach Mervyn Rose to transform her game. Her experience in Australia, surrounded by tennis greats like Margaret, Roy Emerson, and Rod Laver, ultimately improved her physical and mental strength, making her a force to be reckoned with on the court. In tennis, players forge challenging rivalries that persist throughout their careers. One such rivalry emerged between Billie Jean and Australian-born Margaret Court, who faced each other in both victories and defeats since their first match in 1962. Billie Jean eventually made a life-altering decision to travel to Australia and train under accomplished coach Mervyn Rose. The choice to dive deeper into tennis required Billie Jean to quit college, but she received unwavering support from her then-boyfriend Larry, who proposed marriage just before her departure. Preparing for three grueling months in Australia, she leaned on financial backing from businessman Bob Mitchell, who had also financed Margaret Court and top-ranked player Roy Emerson's careers. The unparalleled opportunity allowed Billie Jean to focus solely on tennis and seize the chance to become a formidable player. Training in Australia was no easy feat Billie Jean lost 14 pounds prior to her journey and faced sweltering conditions in her new land. She pushed herself hard, running before breakfast and tirelessly practicing the threes drill, which honed her reflexes, balance, and footwork. Mervyn Rose essentially dismantled and rebuilt Billie Jean's playing style, fortifying her serve and forehand. The improvements took countless hours and lost matches but ultimately translated into stronger weapons on the court. Arguably the most valuable aspect of her time in Australia was practicing alongside tennis greats Margaret Court, Roy Emerson, and Rod Laver. This exposure significantly enhanced Billie Jean's physical and mental fortitude, catapulting her to a higher echelon in the tennis world. Rise of an Equality Champion Billie Jean's impressive tennis journey took her to the number one spot, and her success unfolded against the backdrop of the tumultuous 1960s. With the dawn of the open era, tennis players could finally earn a living, but a stark disparity in prize money between men and women emerged. Recognizing the injustice, Billie Jean prepared to lead the fight for equality in tennis. After honing her skills in Australia, Billie Jean's tennis game transformed drastically. Her once daunting match history against Margaret Court turned into a perfectly balanced rivalry with 12 wins each. With regained confidence, Billie Jean surged ahead and secured her place as the number one women's tennis player, beating Margaret in the 1967 Wimbledon finals and winning the Women's Doubles Championship with Rosie Casals. This illustrious milestone was achieved amid the sweeping changes of the late 1960s, as civil rights and counterculture movements were transforming America, and Berkeley, California, Billie Jean and her husband Larry's home, became a hotbed of activism. 
Athletes like Muhammad Ali and Catherine Switzer were also making political statements, challenging conventions and advocating for change. In 1967, the tennis landscape changed dramatically with the announcement of the Open Era, allowing professional and amateur players to compete side by side in all of the Grand Slam tournaments. More than that, the events would now be open to sponsors, meaning players could finally earn prize money and make a living from the sport they loved. While Billie Jean rejoiced her hard-earned successes, her husband, Larry, immediately recognized a glaring problem. He foresaw the men's professional league monopolizing the lion's share of the prize money, an action that would displace female players from the sport. Indeed, Larry's suspicions were confirmed when absurd disparities in prize money surfaced between men and women players, sometimes with a staggering 8 to 1 ratio. Tournament officials justified the inequality with baseless arguments, claiming that women didn't attract audiences or deserve an equal share because they played shorter matches. This faulty logic concealed a deep-rooted desire to preserve the male-dominated nature of the sport. For Billie Jean, now standing in her position as the world's top female tennis player, the call to action was clear, she was compelled to lead a fierce battle for equity in tennis. The stage was set for an epic showdown, as the champion player prepared to serve up the fight for equality, using her prestigious standing to challenge the sport's unfair status quo. Defying Odds the original nine. The original nine, Billie Jean King, Rosie Casals, Nancy Ritchie, Carrie Melville, Judy Dalton, Val Ziegenfuss, Peaches Barkowitz, Christy Pigeon, and Patty Hogan, were trailblazers in women's tennis. Fed up with the discrimination and disregard shown by the male-dominated USLTA, they risked their careers to form the Virginia Slims Tour, a series of their own tournaments. With the support of Gladys Heldman, a former player and founder of World Tennis Magazine, they managed to secure sponsorship and ingeniously bypassed the USLTA rules. Their remarkable efforts debunked the myth that women players didn't draw fans and paved the way for a better future for women's tennis. In a time when a small group of men controlled women's tennis and showed little interest in their well-being, nine brave women decided that enough was enough. Known as the original nine, these trailblazing players risked their careers to launch a new women's tennis tour, the Virginia Slims Tour. Their aim was to wrest control from the male-dominated United States Lawn Tennis Association, USLTA, and create a better future for women in the sport. The original nine had a formidable ally in Gladys Heldman, founder of World Tennis Magazine and a former player herself. As a Jewish woman working in a male-dominated world, Heldman knew firsthand the sting of discrimination. She helped secure major sponsorship from Philip Morris and ingeniously evaded the USLTA rules by setting up $1 contracts with each of the original nine. This allowed the women to participate in the tournaments without the risk of being suspended. One of the most influential among the original nine was Billie Jean King, a highly popular and outspoken player. She tirelessly raised awareness about the shocking disparity in prize money and the systemic discrimination that plagued the world of tennis. Her efforts to use her status as a platform for equality helped to expose the lies and empty threats of the establishment. Despite the numerous obstacles, the Virginia Slims tour became an astonishing success. Within the first three and a half months of 1971, the tour held 14 separate tournaments, each one a testament to the players' determination and commitment. The original nine and Heldman worked tirelessly to promote their events, hand out flyers, and give interviews, all while continuing to compete at the highest level. Custom-designed outfits by British designer Ted Tinling added flair, allowing each player to showcase their unique personality and defy traditional norms. The Virginia Slims tour gained popularity across the country as fans flocked to experience the colorful personalities of these groundbreaking women. Their unwavering drive to create a fair playing field forced the tennis world to confront and challenge ingrained gender biases. The original nine's courageous actions ultimately inspired a better future for women's tennis, demonstrating the power and importance of taking control of one's own destiny. Battling Beyond Tennis Stereotypes Billie Jean, a tennis prodigy since childhood, was familiar with Bobby Riggs, a retired Grand Slam winner turned charming hustler who challenged celebrities for money. In 1973, 
Bobby gained national attention by luring Margaret Court into a televised match, promoting the idea that even a 55-year-old man could outplay top female athletes and undermining the women's liberation movement. Outraged by Margaret's engagement in this match and her subsequent loss, Billie Jean knew she needed to face and defeat Bobby herself. She discovered her motivation, the flourishing future of women's tennis and sports in general, and, with newfound confidence, triumphed against Bobby in three straight sets. Billie Jean often frequented the Los Angeles Tennis Club in the late 1950s and followed Bobby Riggs, a retired three-time Grand Slam champion. Bobby enjoyed challenging others to tennis matches for money, booming into the spotlight in 1973 when he convinced Margaret Court to participate in a high-profile televised match. Billie Jean was disheartened by Margaret's acceptance, as she had previously turned down the women's tour, denigrated its participants, and perpetuated the belief that women were inferior to men. This event gave Bobby a platform to denigrate the growing women's liberation movement. He intended to prove that even a 55-year-old retired male player could outmatch skilled female athletes and that women belonged in the kitchen, not on the tennis court. Margaret not only joined this spectacle but also ended up losing, which spurred Billie Jean to take action and beat Bobby Riggs herself. The high-stakes match captivated the country, taking place in the Houston Astrodome after an extravagant build-up. Despite her history of visualizing victories and having beaten Bobby countless times in her mind, the intense pressure left Billie Jean feeling unsteady. But a visit to her tour mates at a Virginia Slims tour party provided clarity and calm. She saw a promising future for women's tennis, with increasing prize money and new talents like Chris Everett and Martina Navratilova joining the circuit, and she recognized the broader impact on women's sports. With this passion fueling her, Billie Jean took to the court, resolved to leave no room for doubt about the match's outcome. She indeed defeated Bobby in three straight sets of their best-of-five matchup. As Bobby admitted afterward, he had underestimated Billie Jean, and her victory not only dismantled his chauvinistic claims but also reaffirmed her dedication to the progress and empowerment of women in sports. Unraveling a Tennis Icon's Life Reckoning with her sexual identity was a journey for Billie Jean King, unfolding alongside her famed career in the world of tennis. The complexities of her personal life, her marriage to Larry King, and her tumultuous relationship with Marilyn Barnett left her navigating challenging emotional terrain, all while breaking barriers and building legacies within the world of tennis. Billie Jean King, a renowned tennis icon, grappled with her sexuality for many years. It wasn't until her college days that she even considered the possibility of being a lesbian, and she never denied her attraction to men, nor her love for her husband, Larry. One day in 1969, after spending weeks apart from Larry on an international tour, she confessed to having been with another woman during her travels. Concerned about potential ramifications to Larry's legal career, she presented the affair as a brief episode. Larry, though understandably surprised, did not let the revelation come between them. As time went on, he quietly pursued other women, too. In fact, Billie Jean's confession seemed to bring the couple closer professionally. Larry quit his law career to become a promoter and entrepreneur, actively supporting the Virginia Slims tour and collaborating with his wife on launching World Team Tennis in 1973 and Women's Sports Magazine in 1974. While their partnership in business grew, Billie Jean's hectic schedule offered the couple less time for their personal lives. Billie Jean and hairdresser Marilyn Barnett crossed paths in May 1972. It wasn't until the casual flirtation at a friend's gathering months later that their relationship sprouted. Initially combining personal and professional aspects, Marilyn joined Billie Jean on tour as an assistant. Unfortunately, Things took a sour turn when Manson grew increasingly possessive and demanding. Despite her legendary presence on the court, Billie Jean struggled with emotionally charged confrontations. She attempted to distance herself from Marilyn without inciting conflict, but in 1978 the tension exploded. Marilyn sued Billie Jean, claiming entitlement to a share of her earnings due to their relationship. Consequently, this scandal drew massive media attention. Throughout the entire ordeal,
Billie Jean remained hesitant to fully reveal her identity as a lesbian. Embracing Love Against Odds Billie Jean experienced internal conflict while being outed by Marilyn, as she had just found love with Ilana Kloss. Fearing the repercussion of coming out and its impact on her career, she initially resisted. However, over the years, Billie Jean gradually faced the truth and embraced her love for Ilana, culminating in their marriage in 2018. When tennis superstar Billie Jean was publicly outed by Marilyn, the timing couldn't have been more ironic. She had recently fallen in love with fellow tennis player Ilana Kloss, with whom she would ultimately tie the knot in 2018. The road to acceptance and openness, however, wasn't an easy one. After winning the legal battle against Marilyn, Billie Jean and her then-husband Larry, faced the media together. Insisting that they were still in love and committed to each other, they emphasized that Billie Jean was not a lesbian. The pressure to maintain this facade was immense, as being gay was still considered a psychological disorder and coming out could jeopardize her career. Numerous sponsors had already deserted her, and the women's sports magazine was under duress. Following advice from close friends, Billie Jean opted for damage control, despite her love for Ilana. Nearly a decade would pass before Billie Jean completely stepped out of the closet. In 1987, Ilana insisted on resolving their situation, after years of being together while Billie Jean remained married to Larry. The couple eventually divorced, but they maintained a loving friendship. Larry remarried and had children, with Billie Jean and Ilana acting as doting godparents. Opening up to her parents about her sexuality was another milestone for Billie Jean. During her treatment for an eating disorder, with Ilana's unwavering support, she mustered the courage to reveal her truth. The final step, a public announcement, came in 2006 through an HBO documentary. Billie Jean shared that she had been in a long-term relationship with Ilana all this time. Marriage, though initially not a priority for the couple, became a reality in 2018. Despite Elton John's playful insistence to get married, offering to perform at their wedding, Billie Jean and Ilana chose a quiet ceremony with just themselves and a friend. Billie Jean wanted no doubt about who she wanted to spend the rest of her life with, ultimately embracing her love for Ilana without fear or reservation. Championing Equality Beyond Tennis Billie Jean, a prominent LGBTQ activist, was among the openly gay athletes chosen by President Obama to represent the U.S. at the 2014 Winter Olympics in Sochi. She addressed the violence and oppression faced by the LGBTQ community in Russia and helped a persecuted teenager named Vlad escape by obtaining a student visa and college enrollment in the U.S. Billie Jean also values the progress brought by Title IX, an amendment that pushed for equal opportunities and prize money for both male and female athletes. Progress may be slow, but the impact on female tennis players, going from near zero pay to top earnings, is undeniably significant. Although Billie Jean and Ilana still partake in sports as part owners of the Los Angeles Sparks WNBA team, LGBTQ plus activism now marks the core of Billie Jean's life. Representing the U.S. at the 2014 Winter Olympics in Sochi, she addressed the violence and oppression faced by Russia's LGBTQ plus community. During a press conference, a teenage boy named Vlad described the abuse and bullying he endured daily. Moved by his story, Billie Jean arranged for Vlad to escape Russia through the Unaccompanied Refugee Minors Program. With a student visa and college enrollment at her alma mater, Vlad found love, safety, and freedom. Beyond LGBTQ plus activism, Billie Jean recognizes the significance of strides made in equal rights, particularly in legislation like Title IX. Introduced in 1972, this amendment to the Civil Rights Act mandates equal opportunity, benefits, and freedom from discrimination based on sex in any educational program or activity receiving federal assistance. It was pivotal in ensuring equal prize money for male and female athletes at major tournaments, pushing the U.S. Open to adopt equal pay. Consequently, the impact of Title IX rippled across the world. Finally, in 2007, Wimbledon and Roland Garros became the last two Grand Slams to offer equal pay. Although change takes time, 
this legislation paved the way for female tennis players' remarkable progress. From earning next to nothing in 1960, they have now become some of the highest-earning sports figures globally. Billie Jean's ceaseless dedication to advocating for equality transcends her sport, making changes that others can scarcely imagine. Whether it's securing a better future for an LGBTQ plus teenager or fostering equality within her chosen arena, her work and legacy in championing civil rights have made ripples worldwide that will continue to change lives for the better. As Billie Jean King's autobiography comes to a close, we look back on her extraordinary life as a tennis legend and a committed activist. Her story is one of heart, determination, and resilience, from her childhood aspirations to her iconic victories. King's devotion to equal rights both in sports and beyond, her persistence in fighting for women's pay, and her involvement with the LGBTQ community showcase her impact far beyond the tennis court. All in leaves us with an inspiring message of hope and change, proving that with hard work and dedication, it is entirely possible to leave a lasting, positive legacy.